Yeah, that's right. I want Demon Douglas versus Nicholas Colt tonight in our main event. Excuse me, Mr. Sledder, but you do know that Nicholas Colt has a concussion, right? It probably wouldn't be the best idea to have him out there in the ring competing. Oh, nonsense. Back in my day, when you got a concussion, they told you to suck it up and be a man. Well, and we see how well that turned out. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't happen to catch your name. I don't think we've properly met before. Oh, well, I'm UCW's interviewer, Memphis Taylor. Oh, nice to meet you, Memphis. You're fired. Now get out of my office! And shave that damn mustache. You look like you have a squirrel on your face. What's up, YouTube? This is Mathis Ice 7 and welcome back to an episode of WWE 13 Universe Mode, and we're at the big episode 104. Yep, things continue to go onward here in this Universe Mode, and we're going to kick off the show with another qualifying matchup for that number one contender's elimination chamber match uh, that will take place at Extreme Apocalypse. And here's a man that, I mean, Frost, he was pretty... Pretty dominant when he did have his run here in UCW. Former UCW television champion, a two-time television champion. And uh, Frost has been around since day one. And um, yeah, Frost, he's been out of action for the last couple of weeks. Hasn't really done a whole lot since losing that television championship. But, I mean, Frost, he's had his moments here. He's had some high points here in the uh, this universe mode. The and, end wait a minute. Is coming. Wait a minute. There's that it's mysterious coming. message. The end. Well, <laughs> is here. The end is here, folks. So we'll have to see who who is behind all this. Oh my god. Oh my god. Business is about to pick up, folks. Brian Cole is back in UCW, and he's been gone for about a month, and Brian Cole, a very outspoken superstar in the past in this universe mode, seems like he went on a bit of a hiatus. He was supposed to be in the overboard match, but that never happened, and Brian Cole seemed to just disappear ever since uh, before overboard. He was stating that, or he was slated to be in the match, and he claimed that he was going to win it all in main event final destination, but I mean, the match never happened, so Brian Cole, I don't know whether that would have been true or not. He's about to try and prove that he can still get himself into the main event. And I guess this way, he's got less competition. I mean, if he can beat Frost here tonight, instead of having to go up against 29 other superstars in the overboard match, he will only have to take on five other superstars inside the elimination chamber. So, Brian Cole, I mean, wow, I'm shocked to see his, he's back, but he did kind of disappear off the face of UCW for quite a while, just out of nowhere. And it seems like he's been planning and just been waiting to pick his spot to come back, and it looks like that is what we have here tonight, and Sledder, man. Sledder did a pretty good job of keeping this under wraps if this was his surprise that he had for these qualifying matches. I didn't... Sledder did say he had 10 of UCW's top, or should I say 12 of UCW's top superstars. And while some of them under-delivered, <coughs> nightmare, but some of them did under-deliver, but Brian Cole definitely not going to under-deliver here. And Brian Cole, he's had a history with Frost. Actually, a much deeper history than I thought. Um, of course, Frost took on Brian Cole in a one-on-one -on -one match that ended up costing Brian Cole his career in UCW, which then Brian Cole ended up coming back to UCW, managed to find a way back, but Xander, James screwed Brian Cole out of uh, winning the television title from Frost that night. Frost got the victory by disqualification, and Brian Cole got uh, fired from UCW. He was released since he lost the matchup, but Brian Cole managed to get back in, but it turns out, way back when the whole... The whole beef between Xander James and Brian Cole started way back when on the first episode of UCW, Frost was in the tag team match. I mean, you have to go way back, episode 4 of W13 Universe Mode. Hey, it's the it's the 100 episode anniversary of that match. I'm just kidding. But, yeah, way back at episode 4, and it was actually Frost and Ryan Mitchell 
teaming up against Brian Cole and Xander James in that one. So it's really interesting to see, of course, Frost has undergone quite a, an appearance change since then. But it's interesting, and it's actually kind of funny that way back then, Frost was uh, back there when all of Brian Cole's, uh, I guess you could call them problems, began back uh, with when that whole issue started where Brian Cole screwed Xander James out of the victory in the tag team match. But now Frost here. Frost, I mean, he's going to have to put up quite a fight here against Brian Cole. These two men have their history with each other, and that could come into play here tonight, but you can't get too overly frustrated with your opponent. You're going to have to stay on him, and Frost is doing a pretty good job with that right now off a nice side rush and leg sweep. And now he's going to go into the cover. One, no but a kick out there by Brian Cole. So Brian Cole, I mean, with his hiatus that he's been on, he still could have a little bit of ring rust, so he's not going to... He can't afford to let Frost get too much momentum over him as now. Look at this. What a punch right there. And now, nice float of her neckbreaker by Brian Cole. But, I mean, Brian Cole, yeah, he did disappear out of nowhere. And now he's back out of nowhere. And Brian Cole doesn't seem like he's lost a step since he left the ring about a month ago or so. And now Brian Cole with a knee right to the back of the head of Frost. And he's going to... Looks like he's working the leg here. But Brian Cole, apparently behind all these messages, the end was coming, and now it looks like the end is here. And Brian Cole takes him down, planting him face first into the mat. And now, could be looking to end Frost here as he's measuring him. And Frost now out on his feet. And there's the hip toss neck breaker by Brian Cole. And Brian Cole, it looks like he's going to be done here. No, Frost rolls out of the ring. Very smart move by Frost. And yes, Frost is busted open. But a very nice a very nice move there by Frost, able to roll out of the ring and avoid the pinfall there. But now off that kick to the face, Brian Cole going to the top rope. And with a swanton, hooks both legs. One, two, three. And Brian Cole has qualified for that Elimination Chamber number one contenders match at no escape. So Brian Cole, his hopes of being in the main event of Final Destination are still alive. Now that he's got this victory over Frost, Frost still has an opportunity to be in the Hardcore International Championship Chamber match. But now that Brian Cole has got the victory, Brian Cole is guaranteed a spot in uh, the number one contenders chamber match. So Brian Cole, shocking return and a big victory. Yes, UCW, that is correct. The end is indeed here. Because now that I'm back and that I've qualified for the chamber match. There is nothing that can stop me from becoming the number one contender because... And man, did you see those Nightmare guys? I mean, I knew Sledder was bad with henchmen, but I mean, come on, how desperate can he be to hire them? Intentions are certainly flaring back there in the locker room, but now we got to move on to another matchup here tonight, and that is that between KBM with his partner slash brother, CSM, at ringside for this one. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup against the one and only... Oh, almost dropped my microphone. But against the one and only Colin Watson, of course, of the click, and Shane Cooper will be at ringside for this matchup as well. So, KBM going one-on-one -on -one with Colin Watson, and we do know, as of last week, that uh, The Click will be getting a rematch clause for... Well, they won't be getting a rematch clause, but they'll be... They are already placed in a number one contenders match for the tag team titles via the letter. So, I mean, you have to think at this point that it's going to be KBM and CSM being the opposing team in that matchup, so... 
these looking like it's going to be the two teams in that number one contenders match because, I mean, there aren't really any other tag teams that have been performing in this tag team division. I mean, I guess uh, you, if Slutter's henchmen could kind of count as a tag team, I'm not really too sure about that. Um, I mean, the Dirge Ministry, the team of the Nightmares, they were just backstage, but, I mean, I don't know, they seem preoccupied with other things. And then, of course, DeMarcus and X5 both already have matches for the pay-per-view as uh, they've been teaming up recently. So uh, we'll have to see what this whole tag team division is going to develop into down the road. But for now, it's looking like these four superstars are the only ones available that could challenge for the tag team titles at no escape. So we'll have to see how that goes. <clears throat> ah, excuse me. And now what is this? CSM and Shane Cooper getting getting in, into it with the ref already, and it looks like they've been ejected. Uh, it's a bit strange. They didn't really do anything yet. They were just kind of standing there, but Shane Cooper and CSM ejected very quickly out of this one. Referee not going to put up with it. He's not going to deal with any funny business here, so we are just going to have a straight-up one-on-one match between KBM and Colin Watson right here on UCW Wednesday Night Wipeouts. I don't know, I guess I don't really... Uh, no, WWE still did call it Monday Night Raw when they did only one show. So I guess, yep, this is still Wednesday Night Wipeout. I can call it whatever I want. I could just call it UCW. Ah, uh, why am I rambling so much? Anyway, nice arm breaker there from Colin Watson on the KBM. But from what we saw earlier on in the show is that it will be Nicholas Colt. He'll be in the main event against Demon Douglas. And it has been diagnosed that... Uh, it is official that Nicholas Colt has been diagnosed with a concussion. Uh, we believe that it was caused, uh, even if he might have had some sort of symptoms, that really w what put it over the top was the kick into the steel ring post last week by uh, Demon Douglas himself. And Sledder really should be protecting Nicholas Colt, one of his top superstars. In fact, Colt will be main eventing at the pay-per-view in that triple threat match for the UCW title. But uh, it's a very, uh, very questionable decision by Sledder to uh, force Nicholas Cole into this matchup anyway, uh, considering he's not really at 100%. And especially with something like a concussion, I mean, he really should be taken better care of. But, you know, I'm not going to question Sledder. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not willing to get fired for it. As we saw Memphis Taylor was earlier on tonight. So, once again, we're down in interviewer. We're going to have to find somebody new. Or just not conduct interviews, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, so yeah, that's an interesting story. we got to figure out who our next interview is going to be. And we're not going to have the mustached face of Memphis Taylor on UCW programming anymore. So uh, take that as you will, if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But anyways, the important thing is that I don't even know where I'm going with that. Anyway, let's get back to the match. KBM, nice belly-to-belly -belly suplex there. Taken down. Colin Watson, and of course Colin Watson was the final uh, member left for his team back at the overboard or not overboard, what am I saying? Back at the um, Extreme Apocalypse pay-per-view when uh, the titles, tag team titles were on the line and uh, Drake Savior came back, he was down 2-1 to because Chris Savior was the first eliminated of the match. Drake came back and eliminated Shane Cooper and Colin Watson to win the tag team titles. So it was a pretty impressive performance from Drake Savior back at the pay-per-view, and I'm sure Colin Watson and Shane Cooper would like to get some retribution. Uh, but anyway, now KBM, nice elbow to the back of the head of Colin Watson. And now Colin Watson rakes the eyes of KBM. What a move there. What a dirty tactic by Colin Watson. And now KBM with a nice spinning back kick right to the back of the head of Colin Watson. And now here we go. Thez pressed by Colin Watson and delivering the, some nice right hands right to the side of the head face of KBM. And now Colin Watson going to send him over the top. No, he pulls him back into a power slam. And now it's Colin Watson, KBM, getting back in control of these things here, or get, getting back control of things in here. And here's KBM planting Colin Watson face first into the mat. And now let's see, he's running around. Looks like he's going up to the top rope here. But no, Colin Watson takes a shot. KBM able to counter. And now KBM off the top rope. Went for some sort of spinning kick. But he got caught in a nice power bomb there by Colin Watson. And now Colin Watson stomp right to the leg. 
But KBM now quickly rolling back to his feet. And a nice spinning roundhouse kick right to the side of the head of Colin Watson. And now a super kick right to the face. And KBM could be moments away from winning this one. Into the cover. One and no KBM. Or Colin Watson kicks out. As now KBM places him into the corner here. Sending him down to the mat now. It looks like could he be going for a moonsault here? What a move there by KBM. Very impactful maneuver right there on the part of KBM. And now hooks the leg, but another kick out by Colin Watson. And now a nice drop kick, sending Colin Watson back down to the mat. And now KBM dragging him over to the ropes here. And KBM sent him out to the outside. And it looks like he's measuring him here for a DDT, planting Colin Watson face first into the mat and busting him open. Now it's KBM going up to the top rope here. And a nice 450 splash. What a move by KBM. Hooks the leg. One and another kick out. Once again by Colin Watson. And now there's a spinning back kick and an Enziguri right to the side of the head. And now KBM looks like he's looking to finish things off here. Looking to do away with Colin Watson. And once again setting him up for that rock bottom. Planting him into the mat now into the cover. One, two, Three and KBM defeats Colin Watson here tonight and that's a big victory for the team of KBM and CSM as uh, CSM and Shane Cooper were ejected early on in this one so maybe if they had been at ringside things would have played out a little bit differently but the referee was playing no games ha having no s yeah no shenanigans just trying to keep this a clean one-on-one -on -one match and that is indeed what it was and the victory goes to KBM and to the victor go the spoils and I guess this could help them out give them a bit of a one-up advantage over the click should they face off and pretty much when they face off for the number one contenders for the tag team titles as uh, whoever wins that match will go on to take on Chris and Drake Savior so the Savior brothers the tag team champions are gonna have to keep a very close eye on this little rivalry brewing between those two teams but now we're gonna move on to our next matchup here, and as you can see, DeMarcus Hardy coming down to the ring. Of course, DeMarcus Hardy in X5 involved in that backstage scuffle uh, a few moments ago with the Dirge Ministry, a.k.a. Nightmare and Lil Nightmare. And last week, DeMarcus Hardy qualified for the main event, uh, the number one contenders chamber match at No Escape, where the winner of that chamber match will, of course, get the main event title shot against whoever wins the UCW Championship this Sunday. And now coming down to the ring is DeMarcus Hardy's partner, X5, who got a uh, not really a free pass, but he got a bye. Uh, he, he's qualified for the chamber match because of his two victories he holds over KBM. So in the hardcore elimination chamber match, we've got the Ghost and the X5 in there, as well as a few other superstars who could potentially be in there uh, due to losing their matches at um, uh, whoever lost the qualifying matches for the number one contenders chamber match. And Nightmare was one of the superstars who did lose that match, but uh, it's looking like, I mean, now with Xander James refusing to compete in the tournament, he's out. Ryan Mitchell, it's not looking like he's going to be able to compete either after the attack from Demon Douglas so so far it's looking like uh, the win or not the winner but it's looking like Nightmare will be indeed competing in that uh, chamber match but anyway now here's Richard Thompson coming down to the ring and earlier on we saw that uh, Brian Cole returned that was a huge moment Brian Cole returning and defeating Frost to qualify for the chamber match so Frost will also be competing in the International Championship Chamber match. But anyway, now, as we saw, Richard Thompson came down to the ring. Richard Thompson, the former hardcore champion, and of course, he will be having a matchup next week as the final qualifying match, as we have one later on tonight, but next week as a part of the final qualifying matchup. Richard Thompson will go one-on-one -on -one with another man who will be competing in this very matchup as we can see Nightmare coming down to the ring uh, as a part of the opposing team and now coming down to the ring it is the hardcore international champion 
himself, the Ghost, sporting a new look, uh, more so to match Amazing X here. And that, yep, that has to mean that Amazing X will be going one-on-one -on -one with Richard Thompson next week on UCW to determine who will qualify in that last spot for the chamber match. As later on tonight, we're going to see Max Bell go one-on-one -on -one with Lil Caesar in a qualifying match. So right now, the way things are shaping up, we've got Ghost, X5, Nightmare, and Frost in that hardcore international chamber match. And in the number one contenders chamber match, we've got uh, we've got Demarcus Hardy, Brian Cole, Demon Douglas, and Jesse Sullivan is in there as well due to uh, Xander James refusing to compete. Because as we all know, Xander James still wants that match with Slider. We'll have to see if he will get that match. As of course, you know, ah, excuse me. But of course, with this being a uh, six-man tag, and for some reason, the game can't keep up when there's six creative wrestlers in the ring, or even sometimes just six superstars in the ring. I don't know what that is. Because, like in older games, I've, I didn't have problems with that, but for some reason in this newer thing, it's just not working. So I don't know. So yeah, of course, we're going to get these little slow points on the match, which will actually give me an opportunity to talk about something that is coming up, of course, and that is WA2K15 being released on the PS4. I mean, it is on the PS3 and uh, Xbox 360 as well. Oh, I'm sorry, the PS4 and the Xbox One, for those of you who play on the Xbox One. Uh, PS4 is better. Ah, who said that? Anyway, so Amazing X now in off the tag and a nice clothesline there to DeMarcus Hardy. But anyway, like I was saying, uh, as far as I know and what I've been told, the PS4 still does not support third-party capture devices. And uh, normally this wouldn't be too big of a problem. I'd be able to just record in uh, on the PlayStation 3 if that were the case but when I do get the PS4 and I'm still planning on getting it but I don't know th plans may change but for the time being it's looking like uh, once I get my PS4 I'm gonna get my PS3 it's gonna be moved into the other room so uh, my little sister can uh, play games and watch movies and stuff like that so, that means I'm not going to be able to record anything if, uh, in, unless PS4 updates or something and allows third-party capture devices, which would be awesome. But, uh, I don't know if that's going to happen this soon, so I don't, I don't know yet about that situation. Maybe I will just hold off on getting the PS4 yet, or maybe I will keep my PS3 and just let my sister use the PS4 for the time being. I don't know exactly how that's going to go. Because I still do want to produce content, and if I get my PS3 taken away, that's going to be kind of difficult. But I don't know exactly how that's going to turn out yet. It's still pretty early yet. 2K15 does not come out until October. It is only February. So uh, nothing's definitive yet. Maybe things could change. Uh, maybe I'll be able to capture gameplay on the PS4. Uh, maybe that'll change then, but I don't know. Anyway, I just want to let you guys know about that possibility. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to just stockpile a bunch like record a bunch of stuff before I get my PS4 and uh, stuff like that I don't know exactly how that's gonna work yet but we'll see we'll see just want to let you guys know about that anyway back into these UCW issues we see Nightmare coming off the tag nice double choke slam there from the ghost and Nightmare on X5 as anyway like I was saying earlier on we know the two chamber matches I'm pretty sure I went through everybody who will be competing in that Later on, we've got Max Bell versus Lil Caesar in a qualifying match, and uh, dang it, I knew I was supposed to edit something out. Ah, that's an editing fail. Um, so yeah, let's get back into the match. That was stupid. Ah, what the heck? Well, I've already talked for this long, so I can't really edit that out now. Ah, uh, fuck. That that sucks. Cause I like. When I was editing this video, I knew that there was something I had to edit out, and I looked over, and I was like, okay, maybe there's nothing here that I need to edit out. Like, I, I looked through it, and I couldn't find the spot, so I was just like, okay, there's nothing wrong here. Nope, there is a lot wrong there, so that didn't just happen. Uh, let's just pretend that didn't happen, okay? Okay, that's an editing fail, but anyway... 
anyway, ah, that really disappoints me now. But anyway, I've said that enough now. Let's go back to what I was going to talk about, and that is, of course, we have Max Bell versus Little Caesar later on tonight in the fifth qualifying match for the Elimination Chambers. And then, of course, next week it's going to be Richard Thompson versus Amazing X in the final Elimination Chamber qualifying match. So that's how that's going to go down for those two chamber matches. No escape. Looking like it's going to be, like, I don't know. I know a lot of my UCW superstars weren't, like, I wasn't really giving UCW enough focus. Uh, partially because, you know, I just branched out into way too many things in WA 13. So UCW wasn't really getting enough focus. So a lot of the superstars that I use really haven't gotten a whole lot of build. Like, I think I've done a pretty good job since since the Overboard pay-per-view when I just did UCW. I think I've done a pretty good job at utilizing talent and focusing on some of the up-and-coming guys and as well as trying to bring back some... Like, to be able to uh, convince the audience, like, in a proper way that these superstars are main eventers and these guys are mid-card and that kind of thing, but it is kind of tough when you're cr when you're going from scratch, and uh, especially considering uh, there's only been like two pay-per-views up until I actually started doing UCW full-time, so I hadn't put a whole lot of focus into the superstars, uh, so I really have tried to cut down the roster. I've gotten rid of some guys that I don't plan on using, and I'm trying to put a lot more focus into talent, but uh, the fact that there would be two chamber matches, like, I have enough talent to use in the chamber matches and with it being no escape that's pretty much the theme of the pay-per-view it's like UCW's elimination chamber so I kind of had to do something and I wanted to be able to feature some talent so this is kind of a good way to do that especially if I plan on continuing UCW like I was thinking of doing I was thinking of continuing blah, 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 continuing it into WW2K15 I'm not I'm not sure how that's going to work out now. Of course, I mentioned my whole issue with that. But, um, yeah, I was still planning on doing UCW in some form after WA13. Like, I still plan on continuing it uh, somehow. So, I'll have to see how that goes. Maybe maybe I could always start it off in 2K14 later on or something. Because uh, I did plan on bringing it back at some point. And I have started to collect... Uh, superstars in WWE 2K14 just just on the off chance that I finish this in time and uh, or I guess in another case if I can't do I don't know like I don't know but say something happens and uh, I'm able to stick to just the PS3 and I'll save the PS4 for another time I will just have to d cover WWE 2K15 on the PS3 which I'm perfectly fine with doing if it comes to that uh, would kind of, it would kind of suck, especially if the game features a uh, step up in certain aspects. Like, I don't know, if you can... I don't know, it's going to be kind of tough. Like, if you can feature so many superstars in the ring, that's... Like, I don't know. I guess I can't really talk about this too much because there's not much I can talk about because not much about the game has been released. But if it comes to it, I, I definitely do want to do UCW. And the problem with moving up to the next gen consoles is not everybody in the wrestling clan league federation whatever you want to call it because there are some people uh within ucw itself are going to be like it's not a clan or you know whatever uh but anyway i'm kind of rambling at this point it's kind of important kind of rambling it's a it's a mix there but i feel like i should talk about it because it's kind of good to know if you're if you're a fan of mine, if you're just if you're just new to the channel, uh, then you're probably wondering what the hell I'm talking about. But stick around; you'll have a fun time. And I'm really off topic this episode. It seems like that's what's going on. But um, where was I going with this? Uh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. But anyway, yeah. If I have to, I can always do bring back UCW like as the later game, like I did this year where I did WWE in 2K14 and then did UCW in 13. I'm okay with doing that again. And uh, while I would like it to be on the same uh, console, not console, the same game as like the current game so that I could do two separate universe modes and have one with the cause and one with the 
WWE superstars. Yeah. I don't know why my voice keeps getting like scratchy, but anyway, that's just kind of me giving my thoughts on what could potentially happen. I do definitely want to bring back ECW at some point once I finish this whole WWE 13 thing. But uh, like I've got a, I've got some ideas for new series, but if I'm not going to be able to do it on both consoles, uh, that m is kind of going to delay, not delay, but it's going to kind of ruin my plans a little bit. But um, I, don't, I don't know, we'll have to see the series that I have ideas for, especially if the rumor that I'm hearing is true and uh, Sony plans on doing, uh, what, what would you call it? It's not like a, it's not like an opposite of an update, but it's kind of like uh, the PS4 would be able to play older games like PS3 games and stuff like that. Which I hope is true, because I think the PS3, when they switched to the Slim, I thought it was stupid that you couldn't play PS2 games and stuff like that on it, because that's what I used to do on my old PS3 before it broke, and I bought the new one, like, that was like two or three years ago now, but it was like three years ago now. But anyway, I, th I think that'd be really cool, because then I could bring back, I could bring in this idea that I have, um, I don't know, do I want to keep it as a surprise is the thing. Uh, I, th I don't really think this is the place to talk about it right now, but I was thinking about potentially doing another General Manager Mode series in 2008, but now's not, now's not the time to talk about that. But with, like, how many series I have on my channel now, I have four going, I think. So I have GM, this, Universe, and Pokemon, and I've really, like, been hoping I'd be able to end off some of these series, but I don't want to just stop. I don't, I don't like to do that. If I start a series, I'm going to finish it, unless technology or something doesn't allow me to. But uh, obviously, universe mode can't go. That's my running thing, and I've got huge plans for my 2K14 universe, so that that's that ain't going nowhere. But uh, UCW, I plan on bringing back at some point once I finish this up, giving it a little bit of a break, but I do plan on bringing that back at some point. And uh, it's kind of difficult to think what series I'd be able to cut from the channel because I enjoy my Pokemon series. I like doing those, and I have plans for Pokemon. And say if worse comes to worse and I can't cover WWE, then I'd definitely still do Pokemon videos, and that would allow me to put more time into them. But I don't know. I'm d this is just kind of me talking about the state of my channel, sort of, and like the, the near future for my channel. So I don't know. It's a bit of me rambling, so if you're new, or I don't know, if I wasted your time, I apologize. But anyway, let's get back to this matchup that we got going. It's pretty chaotic at this point. We got superstars walking all around the ring here. Ghost planning Richard Thompson there. And uh, yeah, I, I'm really sorry that I forgot to edit out that little uh, m mistake in the match. Like, I don't know how I still miss that. Uh, maybe I could go back and, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, I don't really see myself going back to edit that because of the commentary that I did over it, but anyway, that's, that, it happens, it happens to the best of us sometimes. But anyway, into this matchup going on here, Richard Thompson and the Ghost are the current two superstars in the ring. Of course, Ghost defeated Richard Thompson to unify the, or not the tag team, but to unify the titles, the international and the hardcore title, and uh, now it's Nightmare getting tagged into the ring here, and... Uh, X5 and Demarcus Hardy, what the heck was that? But X5 and Demarcus Hardy definitely were bashing Nightmare earlier on, and, you know, you heard the comments, I don't gotta, I don't gotta restate what they said earlier on, but Nightmare definitely cannot be too happy about the comments from X5 and Demarcus Hardy, and probably looking to prove himself here as a legitimate threat to these two superstars, and this would be a big opportunity for him to make an impact and prove that he does belong in, well, not only that he belongs in UCW, but that he is a legitimate threat. So we'll have to see over the next couple of weeks if Nightmare can truly uh, prove to be one of Slutter's dominant henchmen, or will he just be another sort of, uh, I was going to say fodder superstar, but that doesn't really make sense. Anyway, so... What the heck, Ghost now going uh, going after X5 on the outside. Actually, actually, no, that's Amazing X. My bad. It's kind of tough to tell. Their attires are really similar, and they both have blonde hair. You know, people make, mis people make mistakes sometimes, but 
There is just chaos everywhere here. We have Ghost going after uh, uh, Richard Thompson over there. Amazing X going after X5 there on the outside. Demarcus Hardy and Nightmare here in the ring. Oh, well, I guess technically Nightmare is outside of the ring now. Up against the ropes there. Demarcus Hardy going to the top rope. What is he going for here? And no, Nightmare. Nightmare, what is he looking? He's got him by the throat. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Nightmare, what a choke slam through the announce table, sending Demarcus Hardy through the announce table. My mistake. And now X5 and Amazing X have entered the ring here. X5 light and Amazing X up with some punches. And now Ghost into the ring. What a spear. What a spear by the Ghost. I know the most overused cut scene. But what a move there from the Ghost. And now it's Richard Thompson back into the ring. And now it's a three-on-one disadvantage here for Richard Thompson. And now the odds are just too much. The referee's called his qualification by this point. This match has gotten out of hand fast. And, I mean, you know, I guess that's what happens when the match, you know, the match got kind of slow there at the end. Uh, like, I cut part of the match out that wasn't good. So I apologize for some of those cutscenes if they seem kind of, kind of uh, forced or kind of... Uh, like thrown together sort of that's why because the match wasn't good beyond that point the match just wasn't good it got really slow you know with the tag team match where they come in and break up a bunch of pins yeah kind of had that issue uh, a lot in that match so anyway let's hope that i can get back to some good commentary here we've got little caesar coming down to the ring of course he'll be going one-on-one -on -one with max bell and i just want to say that max bell uh back at what was it, the pay-per-view, Extreme Apocalypse. I changed his theme, and the creator wanted me to change it back, so I will do that. However, I recorded this episode before he told me to change it, so he's still got the same theme as the pay-per-view, but the next time you see Max Bell, he will not have that theme. And of course, by the next time you see Max Bell, I'm not counting this episode, so like, if he's used in the next episode or the one after that, he'll have a different theme. He won't... Uh, he won't have this theme that he currently has, which, if you can hear it, because I know I turned the volume down, like, really low. Uh, part of that was with, uh, content claims, all those claims that were going out back in, uh, November, December-ish. That time when there was a bunch of copyright claims, false claims going out, and, uh, with some of the, like, some of the music that I used was uh could be claimed because i know in that episode uh jesse sullivan and forza's themes were claimed so as long as i talk over them and they're just playing in the background that's perfectly fine don't get the claims so we all good in the hood so anyway back to the match well not really back to the match but to the match it's max bell one-on-one -on -one with lil caesar and of course max bell's been on a bit of a hot streak lately or as of late as caesar you know Caesar, he got a big victory over Amazing X at Extreme Apocalypse. But before that point, I mean, he's former, uh, he had a former opportunity, or I should say he had an opportunity, former number one contender for the international title. He was unsuccessful, but he did uh, deliver a lot of punishment to Ghost. He had a pretty strong outing back at the Overboard pay-per-view when he went one-on-one -on -one with Ghost for that title. And now Caesar. He's looking to take this step up here as well as Max Bell to the main event picture. Both these superstars have an opportunity to main event final destination if they could qualify and then go on to win the chamber match. But of course, they have to go through five other superstars should they win this one. And even if they lose and they get into the Hardcore International Chamber match, they'll still have to go through five other superstars. So either way, both these superstars have an opportunity to uh, benefit at Extreme Apocalypse. But the question is, will they do it as the Hardcore International Champion? Could they potentially walk out as the champion there? Which isn't a bad prize either. Or will they walk out number one contender for the UCW title and have an opportunity to main event at Final Destination? Hmm. We'll have to see. We'll have to see who wins this and uh, even who loses this. Who goes where, and can they win that match? Whichever match they compete in. But now, Caesar has a nice strategy here. Work on the arm of Max Bell. Try to pick a body part and stick to it. Inflict some damage. Try to cripple, or not cripple, but try to take some... 
try to take some uh, offense away from Max Bell. Uh, just try to take away some forms of his offense. Nice elbow there from the good arm of Max Bell. But, you know, if you pick, you just pick apart a body part like an arm or a leg, uh, even target the head, it doesn't matter really what you go after as long as you stick to it. Could be even something like the ankle or wrist or something. As long as you just stick to it and you just keep going at it like Caesar is right now going after the arm. As long as you just stick to that body part, you can inflict a lot of damage and definitely hinder your opponent throughout the course of the match. As now, Caesar and Max Bell trading shots back and forth. Bit of a stalemate at this point. Just back and forth trading shots. Went for the kick. Max Bell caught him. Now it looks like looks like he's going to set him up here for a sharpshooter. And little Caesar trying to get to the ropes, fight out of this one. And Caesar able to power out of the sharpshooter there. And now both superstars in a lockup here. And Caesar once again right back to that arm. Very smart strategy here early on by Caesar. And now Max Bell, a nice backbreaker there, a bit of a half Nelson. And he takes him down. What strength by Max Bell. As now, what a move there by Lil Caesar, planting his knees right on the shoulders of Max Bell. And now a kick to the gut from Bell. Has him into a headlock. And a nice running bulldog. Taken down Little Caesar back to the mat. And once again, another stalemate point in this one. Both superstars just trying to get a beat on the other. Trying to uh, learn the extents of their offense and just try to figure out how they, how they can gain the upper hand. And Caesar once again back to that arm. And I'd have to say at this point, yep, you can see Max Bell now holding that arm. Caesar has inflicted a lot of damage so far in this one. Oh my god, what an uppercut. What an uppercut as I just about had an orgasm there. What an uppercut there. Hooks the leg. One. No, Max Bell kicks out. Is That was a very out of nowhere surprise attack by Caesar. A very explosive uppercut. And now Caesar. This is where that arm injury could come into play. As Caesar now trapping that arm and going right in here for a face lock. Almost like a cross face. But he gets taken down as Max Bell manages to get out of it. And now Max Bell, Irish Whip, sending Caesar off the ropes. And he takes him down with an arm drag. As uh, Max Bell is going to have to be careful to use his good arm there. And here's Caesar going for his finisher. The Emerald Fusion planting Max Bell right on the top of his head. Caesar into the cover. One, no, a kick out by Max Bell. As it's going to take more than one finisher. Both superstars running on adrenaline. And what a move there once again by Caesar. Dropping the knees onto the shoulders of Max Bell. And this is just the point where both superstars, they're going to have to give it their all and then some. They're going to have to give it 110% in this one if they have any hopes of qualifying for the number one contender's chamber match at Final Destination. As now Caesar takes him down. Oh, but no, a nice counter there from Max Bell with another arm drag and another uppercut by Caesar. As Caesar just out of nowhere with these uppercuts. And now went for a springboard shooting star, but Max Bell able to roll out of the way. It was a very uh, very unique move by Caesar, but it didn't seem to work out for him. That's why they call it high-risk offense. And now off the scissors kick, Caesar back to his feet with the jawbreaker. And once again, dropping the knees onto the shoulders. And now Caesar, it looks like he's going to be going for the springboard shooting star again. And I don't think he quite caught all of Max Bell there. He might have just caught him with a headbutt, but it didn't really, he didn't really connect. And now Max Bell looks like he's going to try and target that head with another scissors kick. And that would definitely be a good idea after Caesar uh, kind of missed on that shooting star, goes to the cover. But once again, Caesar kicks out. And now with a nice slap to the face, Caesar going up to the top rope here. Nice spinning kick there from Max Bell. And now a Frankensteiner off the top rope, taking down Caesar once again. And what is this? Off the top super kick! Super kick out of nowhere by Caesar, and I thought that could have been it, but Max Bell sliding out of the ring with the ring. He's able to escape the ring with his ring escape and stay alive in this one. So now elbow to the side of the head of Caesar, and he had him dazed there for a moment, but Caesar back to his feet, and again taking him down, knees to the shoulders. And now Caesar 
Has him up on his shoulders, looking for a fisherman suplex, but no, he turned it into a like an implant buster. I don't know what to call that, but it was like a fisherman, fisherman buster, I guess you could call it. As now Caesar going up to the top rope once again here, but he hops down as he, Max Bell is just too close. Nothing really Caesar could do there, and now dropping the knees once again as Caesar's hit that move about five or six times. As it's a very good counter to what Max Bell, whatever Max Bell has been going for. Caesars managed to get the offensive with that move, and now dropping an elbow right onto the chest, right under the right under the chin of Max Bell. And now Caesar, just look at the blood all over Max Bell's face, all over the mat. And here's Max Bell setting him up with a nice pile driver. That was a very innovative maneuver by Max Bell. And now thought he was going to go for a cover, but instead it looks like he's going for a submission, working on the arm of Caesar here. And now with that face lock cross face type maneuver Caesar could Caesar tap out here as Max Bell has it locked in tight but no Caesar escapes as my phone's going off oh boy so anyway Caesar now nice springboard shooting star taking out Max Bell as uh come on is this match going to end soon I don't think it will so I'm gonna have to pick up this commentary later on so I will see you guys in a bit all right, I have returned back to this video. I'm sorry about that, but I had some business to go do, and now I'm back. So anyway, as you can see here, Max Bell, Little Caesar in the ring, and Little Caesar kicks to the gut of Max Bell, and a super kick right to the face. And as we saw, Max Bell did hit that pile driver. And look at that. There's just blood all over the ring from these two superstars. Both superstars are busted open at the head, and there is just tons of blood all over the mat. Yeah, good thing this isn't PG. I mean, we can do stuff like this. I mean, like in the current day WWE, that can't happen. You can't see this kind of hardcore action in the WWE nowadays. Uh, but of course, I mean, WWE has gone a lot further than this. Uh, remember Eddie Guerrero versus JBL. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Eddie Guerrero is just... Oh, man, he took a beating in that match. But anyway, let's get back to this one. As, uh, anyway, Max Bell, Irish Whip sending Little Caesar crashing into the steel steps. As the referee now has reached a four count. So both superstars are going to have to get back into the ring. Max Bell now going over the steel steps there. And it's that five count, so the AI is going to have to run back into the ring here. Because that's what Little Caesar is doing right now. Max Bell back into the ring here. And avoiding the count out. Now with a Thez press, punching that busted open cut of Caesar. And there's just blood pouring down the face of both of these two superstars. It's a very physical matchup here. As now Max Bell goes into the cover. Two count and three. Max Bell knocks off Little Caesar here tonight. Oh, Little Caesar. And that was a very hard-fought match between these two. Very physical, very vicious match between these two. And in the end, Max Bell is victorious. So he qualifies. He is the fifth man to qualify for the number one contenders elimination chamber match at font no at no escape of course the winner of that match we will get a uh, ucw championship opportunity in the main event of final destination so max bell has a great opportunity uh set an or great opportunity to come i don't even know what, what i'm trying to say he's given himself a great opportunity he has the possibility to main event final destination if he can indeed win that chamber match. But now we're going to move on into our main event here. Demon Douglas going one-on-one -on -one with Nicholas Colt. And Nicholas Colt dealing with what has officially been diagnosed a concussion. But Sledder, regardless of the concussion, has put Nicholas Colt into this matchup here tonight. And that is a very questionable decision. I don't believe that was the greatest decision that Sledder could have made. Uh, but he does have a lot of other things on his mind right now. So... Uh, for whatever reason, maybe this is a shot at Nicholas Cole. He's trying to get back at him for something. Maybe he's trying to protect his champion Forza. Or maybe this is just Sledder's overbooked at the moment. Uh, under pressure, of course, with the opposing threat of Xander James. And maybe, maybe his judgment is a bit clouded. We'll have to see in the future which it could be. As you know, that could just be some media hype, some media propaganda for you. But anyway... Into the match now. Demon Douglas 101 and Nicholas Colt. And by the way, I failed to mention that Caesar will be.
be in the Hardcore International Championship Chamber match now. So that is five men for each chamber, of course. The main event, or the number one contenders chamber now featuring uh, Max Bell. You know, I'm not even going to list it because I listed all that earlier. So you probably don't want to hear me list all the names again. But just add Max Bell to that list I said earlier. Anyway, Demon Douglas delivering some very vicious punches right to the face. Very methodical approach so far by the looks of things on the part of Demon Douglas. Going right after the head as we've seen from the punches and then that roundhouse kick. And now Demon Douglas slapped to the back of the head. And another one right to the face of Nicholas Colt there. Now Demon Douglas going up to the top rope. Oh, and what a very, not a very European uppercut, but what a European uppercut off the top rope by Demon Douglas as now it's Nicholas Colt. Has my headlock, nice atomic drop. As Nicholas Colt, now he's going to have to protect that head, especially dealing with a concussion. He's going to have to do whatever he can to protect himself if he has any hopes of being in the main event uh, no escape and now a nice neck breaker by Demon Douglas again going back to the head and now a nice rolling elbow once again Try he's clearly working the concussion of Nicholas Colt and now a nice face bust there by Nicholas Colt is Demon Douglas of course cannot be too happy with Nicholas Colt if you remember these two faced off for the UCW championship at overboard so Demon Douglas looking for a bit of payback here tonight and He's clearly made a beeline right for that concussion of Nicholas Colt. He's going right after the head. And Nicholas Colt, he's going to have to pick a body part of his own to start uh, targeting. Maybe if he goes after the arm or the leg of Demon Douglas. And Demon Douglas now sending Nicholas Colt into the corner. And now putting him upside down here in the tree of woe. And there's an elbow. No, it looked like he was going for an elbow to the face, but Nicholas Colt able to counter and a nice clothesline off the top rope. As now it's Nicholas Colt. These are two big and powerful superstars, but as we've seen, both of them going off the top rope, so a bit uh, unique, not unique, but uh, going a bit outside of their normal offense to try and take each other out here in this one, as these two superstars do have history with each other. And... Trying to pull out all the stops for this one if they hope to get the win. These two have had monumental uh, matches in the past. As we remember the UCW matchup uh, for the title. Not only that, but they've had matches before then. And both these superstars know that it's not going to take the usual. They're going to have to come up with something unique if they want to be able to put each other away. And even if not, it's going to take a lot of offense if they hope to get the win here. Demon Douglas, I'd have to say, has the advantage at this point due to the obvious concussion of Nicholas Colt. And Demon Douglas has so obviously targeted the head in the beginning of this one. But Nicholas Colt seems to be, uh, seems to hold the advantage at this point in the matchup. As now Nicholas Colt has Demon Douglas in a headlock. Nice counter by Demon Douglas and a counter again by Nicholas Colt. And a reverse atomic drop by Demon Douglas. And a famous sir. Once again, going back after the head, and now just rubbing his face into the mat and then dropping an elbow right on the back, the upper back of Nicholas Colt. And Colt off a nice counter. Has him in a headlock once again. Demon Douglas counters, and now planting him face first into the mat off that face buster, and into the cover. One, no, a kick out by Nicholas Colt. So it's going to take far more than that to put away the former UCW champion. Who now counters with a punch to the side of the head. But Demon Douglas looking to get right back in control of things. Counter by Nicholas Colt. Demon Douglas once again on the offensive. And Colt once again with a counter. Now it's Demon Douglas this time with a counter. And Nicholas Colt right back at it. Some nice chain grappling here. And now a nice back suplex. Dropping, Nick, or dropping Demon Douglas on the back of his head. So a bit of turnabout is fair play there. And now Demon Douglas... Bounces him off, or bounces him out of the corner, and another face crusher, this time from behind. As that's the move that he used against Ryan Mitchell last week. And now a nice uppercut. Uh, like a knife hand uppercut right to Nicholas Colt. Who manages to get back on the offensive here, as Demon Douglas has definitely controlled it. In the, this one, in the early going, and a nice neck breaker by Nicholas Colt. But 
Nicholas Cole, he's going to have to be careful doing moves like that. May have hurt himself. As you can see now, he's holding his head. That may not have been the smartest move by Nicholas Cole. And a nice elbow there to the face by Demon Douglas, who now from behind with a half Nelson backbreaker. That's a very innovative move by Demon Douglas. And now back-to-back -back elbows. There's the third by Demon Douglas. And now Demon Douglas showing his aggressiveness in this one. Going right back after the head here. Looks like he's setting him up to plant him face first into the mat. And that has busted open Nicholas Colt. And that is definitely not a good sign as to what is going on in this one. And there's a two-handed bulldog from behind. And into the cover once again is Demon Douglas. No, another kick out by Nicholas Colt. And that is Nicholas Colt's resilience showing here tonight. Able to kick out of that one. And now he counters the kick. And here's Nicholas Colt with a stunner. Can he capitalize now? Doing a little bit of taunt here. He should probably go for the pin. And Nicholas Colt not going for the pin. Not sure what he's doing. Oh, it looks like he's looking to inflict more punishment on Demon Douglas. Going after that announce table here. Uncovering the announce table. And this could partially be due to the, be due to the history between these two. But it also could partially be affected Nicholas Colt's uh, judgment could be affected by the concussion as that does tend to mess with your head and uh, change your decisions a little bit. But Nicholas Colt, back-to-back -back kicks to the face. And now a nice swing neck breaker once again by Nicholas Colt. And into the cover, hooks the leg. One, no, a kick out by Demon Douglas. So now it's Demon Douglas back on his heels, forced to play a little bit of defense. Demon Douglas with a nice counter to Nicholas Colt who catches a kick, went for one to the face, and now it is Demon Douglas able to connect with a kick of his own right to the face of Nicholas Colt. And Nicholas Colt is out on his feet here. Demon Douglas from behind tried to go for what could have been his finisher, but unsuccessful. Nicholas Colt now backing him into the corner. But now it is Demon Douglas. Punches right to the busted open cut. And now Demon Douglas noticing the cut, looking to focus on it here. And now driving the knee right into the skull of Nicholas Colt. And Demon Douglas picking him up out of the corner now. Now you can see the blood just flowing down the face of Nicholas Colt. And he gets planted right on the back of his head there off that move. Into the cover and another kick out by Nicholas Colt. And there we go. Kick to the gut by Demon Douglas. Setting him off the ropes. And a nice tilt a whirl backbreaker there from Demon Douglas. As now he stands him up. No, knee right to the lower back. And that definitely cannot feel too good as Demon Douglas now could be looking to put him away again. And there's the reverse Frankensteiner planting Nicholas Colt head first into the mat. Hooks the leg. One, two, three. Demon Douglas defeats Nicholas Cole here tonight. And I, I've been saying this, I've been saying this since the match began. I really don't think that Nicholas Colt should have been out here competing. Uh, Memphis Taylor would agree with me, but uh, I can't really press that issue because he got fired. And wait a minute, it doesn't look like Demon Douglas is done here. Demon Douglas now capitalizing on the injured Nicholas Cole here. Oh no, this is not good. This is not good. Don't do it! Oh my gosh, a kick right to the side of the head of Nicholas Cole. Right into the steel post. And here's Thurm. Thurm now coming down to the ring, looking to save his friend Nicholas Cole. And now trading blows back and forth with Demon Douglas. This is escalated out of control here, folks. The main event is over, the match is over, but the fight is far from over as Thurman Demon Douglas now advancing up the ramp, continuing to trade blows back and forth. And Thurman now looks like he's gaining the upper hand here. Another punch, and Demon Douglas falls off the stage. Demon Douglas has fallen off the stage here, but what is this? Th How'd those boxes get there? But Thurm standing on top of the boxes now, and a swan ton to the outside. Oh my god, what a move by Thurm. Thanks for watching this episode. We got to leave in this chaos. Keep on YouTubing.